Bethlehem Falvey, Zakaria, and Dunlop, MPPs, members of City Council, members of the Ottawa Board of Trade, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends. It's so wonderful to be here with you this morning, representing Algonquin College as a proud sponsor of the Mayor's Breakfast Series. You know, when I look around the room this morning, I see so many friends and supporters of Algonquin College. I see past students who are now proud alumni. I see community members, business leaders, and entrepreneurs, all of whom have supported our high quality programming and our applied research pursuits over the years and continue to provide us with real-time market input and advice to shape our curriculum to meet today's pressing labor needs. We are so fortunate to have such steadfast partners who year after year not only offer our students first-rate work placement opportunities but also hire our graduates. And this success is measurable. Last month Colleges Ontario released its key performance indicators for 22-23, with 92% of employers indicating their satisfaction with the quality of Algonquin College's graduates they've hired, and close to 90% of our graduates finding employment within six months of graduation. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> it's enduring successful partnerships that prove time and again that Ontario needs public college graduates, Algonquin college graduates, to fill the increasing demand for qualified talent. Algonquin college graduates are building homes, highways, and other critical infrastructures. They're supporting those in need in our healthcare system and hospitals. They're taking care of vulnerable seniors in long-term care homes and looking after our youngest citizens in daycares. And they're providing the skilled labor to transform Ottawa and answer Ontario's innovation agenda. Together, we strengthen the province's economic foundation and drive prosperity and growth. To support these goals, I am pleased to see in this week's provincial budget the Ontario government's continued investment in in-demand areas that underpin our economy. Areas such as health human resources, skilled trades training, advanced manufacturing, STEM field, hospitality and tourism, and child care. Thank you, Premier Ford and Minister Dunlop for your continued support of our sector. We look forward to continuing to work with your government to help ensure Ontario is a leader on the world stage. And speaking of world class and world stage, Ottawa is home to the largest technology park in Canada where we have more than 540 companies that employ over 33,000 people and provide more than $14 billion in economic impact to Ontario. Here once again, the four local post-secondary institutions, La Cité, Carleton University, University of Ottawa, and Algonquin College collectively play a vital role in sourcing talent, contributing world-class research know-how, and helping companies extend their networks nationally and internationally. I am inspired every day by the lives we transform at our institution, and I am convinced that through strategic partnership, strong collaboration, continued commitment to academic excellence, and unwavering support from our partners, we can shape a brighter future tomorrow for everyone. After all, a sound investment in public colleges like Algonquin College is great policy for a thriving economy for Ottawa and the province of Ontario. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Thank you, Claude. It is now my pleasure to welcome to this stage His Worship, Mayor Mark Sackfuck. Thank you, Su Ling. Good morning, Ottawa. Bonjour, Ottawa. This is a very special morning, and I'm very excited to, uh, to be here this morning. It's so great to look out at this uh, enormous gathering of people, 600 people here this morning. Uh, this is probably double the size of a normal mayor's breakfast, so I'm really delighted uh, that you're all here to join us this morning. Thank you so much for coming.
C'est une matinée très spéciale. C'est un jour très spécial. Et je ne suis pas surpris de voir tellement de vous ici pour accueillir le Premier de l'Ontario, Doug Ford. Et je vais vous dire une petite histoire qui, je pense, symbolise le Premier et son commitment au service public et la relation que j'ai eu avec lui depuis que j'ai été maire. Donc, j'ai été élu en octobre 24, 2022. And the next morning, I came to City Hall for some meetings about the transition. It was a very quick turnaround uh, before I was sworn in. So we got right to it the morning after the election. And during one of those meetings, my phone rang. And I didn't recognize the number. And I was in a meeting, so I didn't answer it. Um, and so after the meeting, I listened to my voicemail. And it was a message from Premier Doug Ford <laughs> congratulating me on, on becoming the mayor of Ottawa. And, um, and he left his number. And so uh, I thought, okay, well, I, I got a message from the Premier. That's very nice. I'll, I'm going to call him back and leave him a message in return. And, um, and so I called him back, uh, and he answered. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, so ever since then, uh, whenever I call the Premier, either he answers or he calls me right back very quickly. And sometimes that's been, you know, he's stepped out of a meeting, or I think one time he was on his way to his daughter's wedding, or something like that. So, you know, he's been very, very accessible to me, and very responsive to our needs here in Ottawa since uh, the day that I became mayor. And uh, that has been the story of our relationship uh, since day one. So when we're facing a challenge here in Ottawa, if I bring it to the Premier's attention, I know that he wants to help. Lorsque nous sommes confrontés à un défi ici à Ottawa, si je porte la, uh, à l'attention du Premier ministre, il veut nous aider. So I am thrilled to welcome the Premier here to the Mayor's Breakfast today. And I'm also excited because we are going to break with our usual format at the Mayor's Breakfast. We are still going to have a little conversation over here in a few minutes, but first, we have some exciting news to share with you today, and you're going to be the first to hear it. So, a few months ago, the Premier and I began an important discussion about the unique challenges that Ottawa faces. We are, as you know, the capital of Canada, and we're the second largest city in Ontario. And we face challenges that no other city in the country faces. Nous sommes la capitale du Canada et la deuxième plus grande ville de l'Ontario, et nous sommes confrontés à des problèmes qui ne se passent dans aucune autre ville du pays. Our downtown core, as you know, has been dramatically impacted by a number of factors, including the reduced number of people who are going town, downtown to work every day. Uh, people are, a lot fewer people are using our transit system as a result. There's been a significant increase in homelessness, in substance use disorder, in mental illness. We're working toward launching a new alternative response for mental health calls. We are working on restoring the downtown, revitalizing the downtown and the Byward Market. We need help in supporting a growing number of people who are arriving in Ottawa seeking asylum. That has changed so dramatically over the last couple of years. We need to improve our transportation infrastructure throughout our enormous city. I mention this all the time, but Ottawa is four and a half times the size of Toronto geographically. You could fit Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Edmonton, and Calgary inside our borders. So we are unique in that respect. And we need to make important investments to support economic growth and unlock land to build more homes. So for the past few months, the Premier and I and our respective teams and the Finance Minister and his wonderful team Peter, it's great to see you here today along with your colleagues from Cabinet and from the caucus. We have been working very hard over the last couple of months to discuss how we tackle those challenges, and today we will be making a significant announcement about that. I'm going to leave it to the Premier to break the news, though. So please join me in giving a very, very warm Ottawa welcome to Ontario Premier Doug Ford. Yeah, no, thank you. Boy, no, thank you so much. Yeah. 
Thank you, Mayor. I'll tell you, th thank you so much. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, I'll tell you, Mayor, thank you so much for the warm welcome. Thank you for the, the very warm introduction, and it's great to be back here in Ottawa. I have to tell you, folks, when I, when I come here, right from day one, uh, six, even six years ago, we've been uh, in office for five and a half years, I always say Ottawa is one of my favorite places to go. I just have a great time, very productive every time I'm here, and what a great turnout. Boy, you must have been really pumping those tickets. So that's, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm here in the beautiful city of Ottawa with my great team. I, I call them the team of uh, champions. Minister Beth Falvey, the, the great finance minister. I call him the minister of money. You did an incredible job. My goodness, you put a lot of work, a lot of thought into the budget, and it landed really well. And you, you're really covering all bases. So Peter, Thank you for the great work. And Minister Sarkaria, uh, Prab, MTO, again, doing a great job building roads, highways, and transportation. And Barnes, oh, I'm getting to Barnesdale. Don't worry, Lisa. I'm getting to Barnesdale. I'm going to call you the Barnesdale champion. You, you really are. Uh, Minister Dunlop, colleges and universities, and, and thank you for putting well over a billion dollars uh, last week into the colleges and universities and our local uh, champions, MPP, the birthday girl I heard, Goldie Gamari. So what I do, <laughs> what I do with any of the caucus, I call them up and I usually sing happy birthday, so I'll never quit my day job to be a singer, but happy birthday, Goldie. And uh, Lisa McLeod, 18 years, I was over at the party last night, you really know hold, uh, hold a good party and uh, the Barnsdale champion, because she was just all over Prab when he became the minister about the Barnsdale uh, interchange there. And uh, Stefan, great to see you, my friend. You're doing an incredible job and, and just working your back off. And I think I'm heading up to your area uh, either next week or the following week. I'll tell you one thing, they have me booked solid going up to Ottawa. It's like every single week now we're, we're heading up here, showing a lot of love. And I also want to thank the Ottawa Board of Trade. Uh, thank you very much for putting this on, the Ottawa Business Journal as well, and everyone at Shaw, the Shaw Centre. But I want to give a shout out to the servers. They, the servers never get recognized. They're working their backs off. I still, uh, I'm, I'm just very grateful for their work. You know, just, just being able to carry those, I, I think they have 10 or 12 uh, plates all at once. I'd, I'd be a mess if I did that. And uh, my good friend, the mayor, I'll tell you, we hit it off the second uh, we met and we talked to each other and I thought, boy, this is a guy that I can, I can work with and, uh, and anything you need, mayor, you know, you give me a call, I'll call you back immediately. You jump right to the top, he does, he jumps right to the top of the, the pile. And I'm uh, really looking forward to our, our fireside chat as well. Ottawa is such an amazing city. It's not just a government town, sure it's a government town, but it has so many different sectors too. You talk about uh, tech, we've seen tens of billions of dollars invested in Ontario in the tech sector, and I was talking to the great councillor, the number you gave me, councillor, was about 540 tech companies, but that's an old number, so we're probably up to six, 600 right now, and it's uh, a very diverse uh, tech sector. I, I know I was here a little while ago with Nakia. I think Nakia is out here. So thank you for your investment here in Ottawa. But there's uh, auto tech too. Folks, we've seen uh, $28 billion in the EV sector invested right here in Ontario. And obviously it's a big sector in Canada that they're focusing on the, on the technology over there. And um, we, we, I don't know if you saw it in Bloomberg News, it said, uh, Canada, I should say Ontario, but we'll, we'll say uh, Canada, uh, is, the, is now taking over China as the number one destination for EV uh, battery production. And so it's really, really exciting. We've, we've, seen, we've seen, again, over $28 billion. And I have to give a shout out to the Minister of Economic Development and, and Trade, Vic Fidelli. He's the only guy he must put on 2 million miles a year because he is all over the world selling Ontario. And this is my prediction, and I don't think I'm going to be wrong on this. 
So we've seen $28 billion in AV, we've seen in tens of billions of dollars in tech, and by the way, uh, we're growing faster than Silicon Valley and San Francisco Bay Area by 350% faster. Uh, we employ more people in Ontario in the tech sector than uh, San Francisco Bay Area and Silicon Valley. They, they employ about 388,000, we employ 425,000, growing rapidly. Uh, right now. And then life sciences too. Uh, Cam Love from Ottawa General is here. Uh, Cam, are you out there? Some of the, he's, he's looking at Innovation Center. So we're, we're going to really invest in, in also the life sciences. So we've seen, again, over $3 billion of investment right here in, in Ontario when it comes to that. Uh, you know, our, we, we, there's always headwinds, there's always bumps in the road. But I'll, I'll tell you, we're doing extremely well. I've had the privilege and the honor to meet uh, a lot of ambassadors and, and consul generals and governors from the U.S. And they, they're just, they're, they're in awe. And it's, it's about Team Ontario. It's not about an individual, it's not about a party, it's about Team Ontario. I could not do this job without the collaboration and cooperation of 444 municipalities and the federal government. I have to give them a shout out. They've invested a lot into the, the sector. But uh, again, I, I, I figure $30 billion are going to be invested right here in Ontario this year. It's going to be a, a record year. And you know something there? Do you know, as you have probably the toughest job out there. Do you know if you have any, a tougher job uh, than the mayor? Is my teleprompter guy, Rico, because I'm all over the map. I haven't even looked at the teleprompter. <laughs> Rico, I apologize. Go have some bacon and eggs. I'm going to be back with you in a minute. And uh, yeah, there he goes. He, this, I don't know how you keep, like, I don't know how you do it, to be honest with you. But uh, I'll get back on script here. So it's also a very unique one with its uh, own set of economic and social challenges, Ottawa, and I heard you say that, uh, Mayor, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna work with you and we're, we're gonna help you. Okay, Rico, you gotta start moving that up now. See, I threw him off. So it's our, uh, it's our province's second largest city and it's an economic and a service uh, hub for all of Eastern Ontario. And it shares a border obviously with our great neighbors in Quebec and it's our nation's capital. I'm so proud of uh, Ottawa being our nation's capital. And while these distinct circumstances will always present some challenges, I believe they mainly offer some amazing opportunities. And I always say when there's challenges, let's look at opportunities, and there's a tremendous amount of them. Opportunities to grow Ottawa and Eastern Ontario's economy, opportunities to create better jobs with bigger paychecks, opportunities to support the hardworking people of this region. That's why today we're announcing a new deal for Ottawa. And thank you, Mayor, and, and our, our team, too. We're announcing a new deal for Ottawa that will help the city continue rebuilding the economy and deliver on key priorities, including building highways and homes. As part of our historic new deal, the province will provide the city with up to $593 million. Over, <laughs> over the next 10 years in operating and capital funding, before we get into the fireside chat, let me take this opportunity to highlight some key details of our new deal. The first one I'm most excited about. Subject to due diligence, we're uploading Ottawa Road 174, and that's, that's gonna be big. It's really, really big. And when we upload the, the roads, uh, really the, the biggest uh, issue on roads and highways is the maintenance. So we're providing $9 million in immediate funding for maintenance. This will free up much needed room in the city's capital budget to invest in local priorities while ensuring this highway is in good repair for long term to support Ottawa's economy. Nothing is more important, here I go off script again, sorry Rico, but nothing is more important than infrastructure. When I say infrastructure, it's, uh, we're spending about $185 billion in infrastructure, building the roads, building the highways, building transit, uh, building the hospital, which by, by the way, you're getting uh, the largest spend, second, uh, sorry, second largest, almost the, the largest, uh, well over $10 billion of investment at Ottawa General. 
and uh, Chiu, I know we, we invested in the pediatric care as, as well. Both of them are doing a, a great job. And when we had a chat, uh, the Minister of Finance, Peter and I, we sat down with our team, and you have two choices. I know Peter mentioned this on your press conference. I'm, I'm taking your words, Peter. We have two choices. Either just stop spending for a couple of years and uh, nothing moves, or you keep moving, you keep building. We chose to keep building because as we say, budgets only last a year or two and then they're back in balance and we have a surplus, but infrastructure lasts 50 to 100 years. So we chose the route to keep spending on infrastructure. You can never go wrong if you invest into the, the hospitals and schools and, and roads and, and highways. So thank you, thank you, Peter, for, for doing that. And we're also uh, focusing on transportation needs, including funding for the design and construction of the new interchange, Highway 416 and Barnsdale Road. See, you're as happy as anything, Lisa. She, I'll tell you, she, she's worked hard on that. Advance, advancing the Canada North Transit Way and repairing and upgrading rural roads outside of Ottawa City Centre. We're also taking a serious action to improve public safety. That's a, that's a big issue in every single city. Uh, first, by adding more uniformed police officers, which I love our police officers in the byword market and on public transit. And secondly, by building a new police neighborhood operations center right in the byword market area. That's very important, absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful area, but it's an area that we've seen in, increased crime, and I know that's a top priority for the, for the mayor as well. The New Deal for Ottawa also supports the region's economic growth. We're providing over $20 million to invest Ottawa to attract new jobs and investments. The deal will also deliver on our joint commitment to build more housing, to bring home ownership and reach for more people. And you know, every, every poll you look at, it doesn't matter who's doing the poll, uh, make no mistake about it, the number one issue is affordability. Affordable homes, affordable groceries, and affordable gas. So we, we dropped the, the gas tax again, we're gonna hold that. I think we're holding that forever, Peter, sorry to tell you, but it's 10.7 cents. Uh, we've knocked off gas and uh, I'm a little, not to get deep into it, I'm a little disappointed on April 1st, the carbon tax is gonna go up 23%, which is absolutely mind boggling to me. We've had a very good relationship with the federal government and I don't look, folks, I don't look at political stripes. I don't care if you're from the Green Party, the Orange Party, the Red Party, the Blue Party. I want the party for the people that are gonna represent the people, put more money back into their pockets instead of the government's pockets. Matter of fact, one of the worst places you can give your money is to the government, to be very frank with you. And I'm thrilled that Ottawa has agreed to open up municipal lands for more housing and will help facilitate a new long-term care home at the Ottawa Hospital. I was talking to Cam Love about that. So Cam, keep going, you're doing a great job. Do you know what I, I love about Cam? Um, he doesn't call up and say, can I do it? Can I this, can I that? He just does it. The guy's an absolute champion. So we're, we're working hand in hand with Mayor Sutcliffe to rebuild Ottawa, to rebuild its economy. I also want to give a massive shout out again to Peter Bethenfall, the Ontario's Minister of Finance. He was critical in landing this deal. He was on the phone with the mayor going back and forth. So thank you, uh, both the mayor and uh, Peter. It's greatly appreciated. Well, well, Ottawa and the city of Ottawa have come uh, this, uh, to this historic agreement. We still need the feds at the table. As the largest employer in the city, the federal government needs to do its part to help rebuild the city's economy. And I think the next uh, part is so critical too. You, you know something, I, I know a lot of people love working at home and that's fine, but uh, we need the federal government to get government workers back into the office because, you know, even, <laughs> even a few days, uh, because what, what it does, it, it, it's a real massive boost to the transit ridership. 
it's huge and in the downtown economy uh, without the people down there the economy starts dying the restaurants start hurting and everything else starts hurting so uh, hopefully the Prime Minister will call people back to work we're also calling on the federal government to step up as a full partner by providing federal support on shared priorities including shelter supports for asylum uh, claimants that's very important <laughs> along with infrastructure funding and support new housing and support for Ottawa's unique costs for managing protests and demonstrations at Parliament Hill. I gotta ask you, has the Prime Minister called you back yet? No? <laughs> See, he's too shy. Unbelievable. I know, he's not saying that means no, he hasn't returned your call. But anyways, I'll, I'll be on him like an 800 pound gorilla. I can't figure that one out. So uh, we need all levels of government working together to ensure Ottawa, our nation's capital, has a strong, thriving, and vibrant economy. Once again, I want to thank you, Mayor, for your partnership, your friendship, and your support. And I want to thank each and every one of you. You play a critical role in Team Ontario, and I'm so grateful. I really am. So thank you, and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Premier Ford. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'm going to do this now before I forget, because we'll get into our conversation and I'll forget. But um, uh, by the way, I'll tell a quick story. We, um, the first time we met, you came to Ottawa. Yes. And, uh, and I, I said uh, to somebody, should I, should I give the Premier a gift? Uh, and, and they said, no, it's OK. You don't need to do that. He's not into that sort of thing. Um, and then I showed up and you gave me a gift. <laughs> so, so I felt really bad about that. Oh, so then the next time we met, yeah. I flew to Toronto and we were, we were, I, I said, I gotta bring, I gotta bring the guy a gift this time. You know, I can't, I can't show up empty handed. And so we, we talked about it and we had the team at the city. What's the right thing to give the premier? You know, what do you give the premier of Ontario? Um, so we, we decided on the gift and then my chief of staff Robin and guest and I went to the airport and at that point we realized that uh, we were flying to Toronto for the day we had only carry-on luggage we weren't checking any bags and the gift we were giving you was a clock so we were bringing something that ticks onto an airplane <laughs> uh, and going through security yeah. but we managed to get it through security yeah, that was um, beautiful Thank you. <laughs> yeah uh, is your mic working can you check yeah okay perfect so, yeah. so you just, I'm gonna give you another gift today. You just talked about Team Ontario, and I'm gonna narrow it down a little bit. I talk all the time, as everybody here knows, about Team Ottawa, l'équipe d'Ottawa. Um, so I have a little something for you on behalf of Team Ottawa. Oh boy, thank you, thank you. Let me just, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Flip that around. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Yeah. I figured that was the that least I could do. You're giving us almost six hundred million dollars. Yeah, I was going to say so. that's an expensive jersey. That's a six hundred million dollar jersey. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna frame that one. Yeah, oh, thank you. Very yeah. thoughtful. Thank you. That makes it a fair deal now. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fair. That's fair trade. Listen, thank you so much for your support for our city at this really critical time. Uh, we both talked about the unique challenges that uh, Ottawa is facing. That's why this is necessary. This is not. This is not about any municipality in Ontario. It's very, very specific to Ottawa and our unique needs. So once again, thank you for recognizing those unique challenges and, and being our partner. Well, thank you, Mayor. It's a great relationship.
We're going to continue uh, building the economy and the support for, for Ottawa. I uh, Honestly, I love Ottawa. I'm not just saying this. I, I'm telling you, every time I come here, I have a phenomenal time. So I just love the people, and we're going to work well together. Absolutely. So um, I wanted to thank you as well on a couple of other fronts uh, that, that, you know, I think uh, sometimes you don't get enough credit for. Uh, one of them is the Civic Hospital campus that we're building. Yeah, that's uh, incredible. This is an enormous project for Huge. the city. It's going to mean world-class health care. You mentioned Cam Love, uh, the CEO of the hospital. Um, we're, we're, you know, I, I pass by there quite often, the new site uh, where the hospital's being built, and it's, uh, it's, we're seeing the structure coming out of the ground. We still have a lot of hurdles to cross and progress to make, but, but that is going to be a game changer for our community. So thank is you for ever, your support on that. Yeah, no, that, that, that's really good, and we're, we're, I hear we're building a long-term care uh, homes there as well. So I'm, I'm quite excited. I can't wait to uh, go and pay you a visit and cut the ribbon and I hear the uh, parking lot's getting done right now so yep. I'm gonna have to come by next week and and uh, drop by that'd be great the other thing I want to thank you for is your support of the world junior hockey championships which we will be hosting yeah, in Ottawa that's exciting. this Absolutely. year yeah that, that's uh, that's amazing I remember you calling and going back and forth and Minister Lumsden uh, pulled through to, through on that because it's a competitive bid as well so i'm glad we landed it here in ottawa yeah and it's it's very rare for one these days for one city to host the world juniors quite often it's a you know edmonton and calgary hosting yeah. it toronto and montreal hosting it um but ottawa is hosting it on on our own uh starting this december and continuing into january it's going to be huge for our economy and when i reached out to you and said this is important for us and we need the provincial government to provide some support for our bid. You, you made it happen. So we appreciate that yeah, very much. It's going to be it's going to be great. I'm going to be here, and uh, I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, we're going to go to some games, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to some games. You can wear your New Jersey. Yeah, I will. Well, <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> it's neutral, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not the Leafs or, or the Senators. That's right. We don't talk about the Leafs here. Uh, I know. I don't blame you. I have to be neutral. And yeah. I got a uh, Sens uh, shirt this morning. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah that's great. Um, so listen, I, w I wanted to, we can explore the deal a little bit more, um, uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about your background uh, mm -hmm. in why you chose to, to enter politics and, you know, why it was so important to your family. Your father was an MPP as well. Um, so just before we do that, um, why do, what do you see as the opportunity for Ottawa going forward? Where, where do you hope to see this city progress to and and you know in the context of your plans for Ontario well I think uh, it starts with a strong economy the economy pays for everything it pays for health care pays for education puts food on people's tables gives them the opportunity to do things they might otherwise not uh, be able to do and you know I always like this number mayor is when you know and I, I try to avoid the, the politics but I, I just I'm a numbers guy uh, the previous government chased 300,000 jobs out of this province, uh, high taxes, you know, and, and high energy costs and red tape and regulations. The good news is with all the support of people in here and across Ontario, there's 700,000 more people working today than there was five and a half years ago. And I always say government doesn't create jobs, we create the conditions and the environment for companies to come here and thrive and prosper and grow and reinvest into their people, in, into the uh, uh, technology, into infrastructure, putting on buildings. So I, I'm really, really excited, especially the, the tech sector. Uh, it's really growing. We have some of the, the brightest people uh, anywhere in the world right here in Ontario when it comes to uh, tech. And tech is right across the, the, the board, no matter if it's healthcare, uh, with AI, it was born right here in Ontario. People don't realize over at U of T actually, and it's just spread. So it's uh, it's going to be great in in the auto sector with the tech, as well. But there's more uh, more investments coming to Ottawa here, so it's good. And we share obviously the priority of of building more homes. That is such it's probably the greatest challenge that that we face in yes. in this country right now is is the housing crisis. Can you? Talk more about how we can get that done together. 
Yeah, so really it comes down to getting uh, the permits out as quickly as possible. And I, I want to thank the, the councillors. I walked a mile in their shoes. I was a councillor at the City of Toronto when uh, Rob, was, Rob was mayor. And uh, they have a tough job. It's like front-facing any issues. They call their local councillor. Uh, but they're instrumental in making sure we move forward on the housing uh, file. And uh, we, we put together a fund, uh, Building Faster Fund, uh, $1.2 billion, saying here's an incentive for, for cities to build more homes. And that goes into infrastructure. Uh, also, Minister Surma, a great infrastructure minister. If you add up everything, it's close to $3 billion, the announcement last week on infrastructure sure that we have the the sewers and the water uh, that that's critical uh, absolutely critical to building homes yeah that infrastructure money is certainly very welcome and the finance minister and I have talked about that yeah. um, and so so let's talk about your your family history and you know uh, people may not remember that your dad was a member of provincial parliament as well as an entrepreneur and yes. the founder of your family business um, tell me a little bit about what you learned from from your dad Doug Ford Sr. Well, it's, it's really uh, customer service excellence. When someone calls me, um, you return their call. I get a, approximately two, even on busy days, 300 messages, and you have to return everyone's call. It doesn't matter if it's little Miss Jones that has a crack in her sidewalk or the great mayor of Ottawa, you return their phone call. It's critical, and I emphasize that to our caucus and the cabinet to... Uh, return everyone's call uh, and you return someone's call. you know how hard it is to get a hold of someone in a government to try to get something done you know I, I just call my line the the 911 line just call and we'll we'll help you out any way I possibly can it is not about being the province or municipal I take all calls municipal provincial and federal and was was public service part of the the message that you got from your father that it wasn't just about building a great business you guys yeah. have a family business that's been very yeah. successful and you worked in that business um, but the commitment to public service is that something that you learned from him uh, did we, did we ever even before you know, our family's been in politics over 30 years but he emphasized you know we've been blessed as a family and you better get out there and give back. It doesn't matter if it's supporting uh, the local hospital or uh, being part of the Rotary Club, which our family was heavily involved in, or any organization at all, uh, you have to give back. And that, that's what we've been doing. Uh, so, and that's how we ended up in, in politics. Do you know who got us in politics? And I, I always tell them and I remind them was Bob Bray. So my dad was getting to that age and we were involved in the business and you know, he always owned the business but he was getting in our hair, he was telling us do this, do that and you know, so um, he'd go home and it was, it was when uh, Bob Ray got elected, it was 1990. And he used to shout and scream at the television at Bob Ray. And he'd drive my mom crazy after 56 years of marriage my mom called me up and said, you know, I'm going to end up killing your dad because he's just at home screaming at Bob Ray at the television. And I've told Bob Ray this story many times. Uh, he's a, by the way, Bob Ray's a really good man. He really is. Um, and uh, so without, without him knowing, I went to the local riding association and I put his name in the hat. Because my dad sat on the, uh, the board of the hospital for 12 years and Rotarian and all sorts of charitable organizations and a, a local business owner. Uh, so I thought, boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you busy. So I came home and I said, dad, rather than scream at the television, I'm sure people scream at the television when I'm on there too. <laughs> so I, uh, I said, go do something about it. And he goes, I can't stand government. I can't stand politicians. And I said, well, I put your name in the hat to run in the, in the nomination. So we ran in the nomination. He was, he was fortunate. He, he uh, won the nomination. And then we were up in, against an incumbent, a 16 year incumbent, uh, Dr. Jim Henderson. He was a really good person. And uh, we were fortunate enough to, to win that election and with Mike Harris. And then Rob got involved as a, as a city councillor. He was down there for, I think, 10 or 12 years. And I was, I was running the business in Toronto, then I expanded in Chicago uh, in uh, New Year's uh, Eve. I hopped on the plane. 
I didn't tell anyone. I brought my accountant with me and said, we're going to Chicago. And so I called ahead a week ahead to find a real estate agent that would find a little office to start it off. And sure enough, I found this gal that uh, was from Romania, and she was there for a year. And I said, hey, do you work New Year's Day? And she said, sure, I'll show you some little places. And so I, I found an office. It was uh, uh, about 1,000 square feet. And our accountant went home. But I called my dad on New Year's Day, and he said, hey, son, happy, happy New Year's. I said, Dad, happy New Year's. He says, are you coming over for breakfast? I said, I'm in Chicago. And he goes, what are you doing in Chicago? I said, we're expanding into the U.S. No, focus in Toronto and this and that. This is the best thing we ever did is expand into Chicago. And then six or seven years later, we, we purchased a company in New Jersey. And uh, in Chicago, uh, we saw a real huge growth. We, I started in a little office and then expanded four times in less than five years, running 24-7. And uh, it's just a, a great place. So I spent 20 years going back and forth uh, to uh, Chicago and New Jersey. And I give all the credit to my wife. We had four kids in less than five years. I don't even know how that happened. I must, you know, <laughs> on the weekends when I came home. But uh, anyways, we had four beautiful girls. And so she gets the credit uh, as we're building the, the company. She was hard at work raising the kids. So you could have stuck with that and continued to work in the family business and, and continue yeah. your successful business career, but you, just, you, you ended up running for city council, you, you ran for mayor of Toronto, and then, and then uh, I guess now six years ago, you ran for the leadership of the Progressive Conservative Party yes. in Ontario. What drew you to politics? Well, it was, it was Rob. So, you know, he was down at city council and he used to call me up, Doug, there's so much waste and so on and so forth. And one day he called me up, and he, uh, I was in Chicago, and he said, I need you to come home because I'm running for mayor, and you have to run in my seat as city councillor. I almost hit the telephone pole driving down the street when he told me he's running for mayor, and I said, Rob, I can't. I just, I can't do it. I got to be here in Chicago. And then I came back, and we met uh, a local city councillor by the name of Mike Delgrand, the budget chief. At the time, we went to Swiss Chalet, and uh, Mike convinced me somehow. Do you know what Rob told me? He goes, Doug, don't worry. It's going to be a part-time job. <laughs> I can assure you, uh, counselors aren't part-time jobs, number one, but being uh, the mayor's brother is not a part-time job. But, it, you know, when we, we walked into office, I'll never forget it. I, I come from the private sector, so I'm just focused on, on numbers, and uh, the city manager said, well, Welcome to the city of Toronto. Uh, you're facing $774 million of pressure. You have to raise taxes by 20 some odd percent. And I said, We're, we'll never do that. And sure enough, we worked with a great staff there. Uh, we drove efficiencies. We looked at lean six sigma uh, methodologies and uh, standardization. And we delivered a 0% tax increase. Uh, the first year. Overall, in the term, we saved a billion dollars. And uh, I'll never forget, the, the Toronto Star used to say, no, no, you never saved a, a billion dollars. You saved 887 million. I thought, okay, I'll take the 887 <laughs> million coming from the Star. So I thought, but it was over a billion dollars, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Um, yeah. Oh, Lord. So, you know, something that comes out in what you talk about, which I've always noticed about you, is that uh, you see the best in people. Like, so you just talked about Bob Ray, who drove your dad crazy, but he's a great guy. And, yes. the, you know, the, the guy that your dad ran against for MPP is a great guy. Um, and, uh, you, you know, you, you talk about relationships all the time, and you spoke about the relationship you have with the federal government. You're not the same political party as the, as the federal government, but you developed, uh, particularly during the pandemic, a very strong working relationship with Christia Freeland and yes, with, with other ministers. Person. So yeah, can you talk about, long. you know, that you, I, I feel like you see the best in people and that and the building those relationships is very important to you. It's all about relationships, no matter if it's politics or, or business. And I truly don't care about political stripes. Our, our, our family's uh, been elected by traditional NDP voters, traditional Liberal voters, and PC voters. 
uh, just being hardcore conservative, and, and don't kid yourself, I'm pretty staunch fiscal conservative, but we have big social values too, so I guess I'm a pretty progressive uh, conservative as well. But Christia, she's a wonderful person. During the pandemic, you know, we were on the phone every single night, boy, late at 9, 11, 12 o'clock at night, just getting decisions made really, really quickly. And I got to give uh, another minister up there, Dominic LeBlanc. Uh, he, he does a great job as, as well. And uh, he comes over for a cigar once in a while. I'm not a cigar smoker, but I give him some cigars, and he's just uh, a wonderful person as, as well. And same with your counterpart, Olivia Chow. We've known Olivia for a long time. Uh, Rob and her late husband, Jack Layton, uh, sat side by side with each other at city council when Rob first got elected back in 1999. And they really bonded, and they had a good relationship. He said, Jack taught me so many things, Doug, you wouldn't believe it. I said, but... You know, he's pretty staunch NDP -er. And I said, how did you vote? He said, at the beginning, I'd just look over to see what he was voting, I'd vote the opposite, so. <laughs> but, they have, but, you know, some, uh, with Olivia, we, we hit it off. She's such a kind person. She believes in building homes. And you, you always have to look at the good parts of, of every, everyone. Uh, and there, there's always good, always. Absolutely, it's a great lesson. So I often uh, reflect on the fact that uh, two years ago I wasn't planning to run for mayor and uh, yet here I am sitting with you today um, and, and for you the time between running for the progressive conservative leadership and the election six years ago in 2018 was very short. So it all happened very fast. Do you ever look back on that? Because <laughs> it was a bit of a whirlwind running for the leadership, That's right. winning the party yeah. leadership, and then winning the 2018 election and becoming premier. Yeah, so what, what happened when I ran for mayor? Um, so this is the type of guy Rob was about returning calls. You know, I, I went into the hospital and he had about two weeks left. And he wasn't conscious the last week. But the week before, I walked in and Rob used to have a call sheet. It was eight and a half by 11, it was split down the center, and it was just sheer numbers. He'd give his, those fridge magnets out, and uh, he'd give them out to everyone, half a million of them. And actually, someone came up the other day and said, I still have your brother's fridge magnet. So he, he knew it wasn't long, but I walk in and there's Rob returning calls. And I, I said, Rob, what are you doing? He goes, but without missing a beat, he was dead serious. He goes, these people expect me to return the call. And I thought, man, who does that? No, no one does that. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you know you have two weeks left, and you're returning constituents' calls. They'll never make a, a retail politician like them, ever. Never. So. But did you, I mean, just looking on that whirlwind time from when you became leader to becoming premier, yeah. what, yeah. any So just to carry on, on sorry, yeah. I got sidetracked there with Rob, yeah. I apologize. So when, when they, at the time, when Rob was running for mayor, then he got sick and he, he got cancer, and then like in a couple hours before, um, the doctor said, you, there's no way you're gonna run. So there's a cutoff in municipal politics, as you know. Uh, you put your name in or you don't. So I ran down there, threw my name in. It was like four weeks before uh, the election or four or five weeks, and you had to start a whole campaign. And uh, I came close, but uh, never never happened. Uh, had a good relationship with Mayor Tory. He's a friend of mine. Um, he's a good, very good man. And I wish he never uh, stepped down. That's nothing against Olivia, but he's, he's a good person. And uh, so... At that time, I, I thought, okay, I'm going to wait, and then I'll run again for mayor. And then, uh, you know, I think three or four months before the provincial election, a little mishap happened with the, the leader at the time, and I thought, okay, uh, I, I think I can help the province more than the, the city. And um, I was fortunate enough to get elected. But I, I'll tell you, and I'm not just saying this, folks, I, I've been in politics for over 30 years. I've never seen a stronger team, uh, caucus and cabinet. Uh, my biggest challenge is I have 50 people that all could be cabinet ministers, 
and it's very difficult, but we have the most talented, diverse, sector diverse, multiculturally diverse as well. Uh, but man, are they, uh, the, the quality is second to none. I've never seen provincially, federally, municipally, a uh, brighter uh, business-minded group than, than I have down at uh, Queens Park. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's great. Well, we, um, we have to wrap up, but I do want to say uh, it, it has been a pleasure. Over the last couple of months, we've been working pretty intensely, and our team at the City of Ottawa, led by our City Manager, Wendy Stephenson, uh, has been working very hard with your team and the folks in the finance department and the finance minister's office and the premier's office and there's so many uh, people who who worked diligently and were meeting multiple times a week to get this agreement done uh, that was uh, there's some great people working on your team and the finance minister's team and the teams of the other ministers to get this done so I want to thank you for that and thank all of them because this deal wouldn't have happened without thank you. them thank you. Yes. Yeah. And we will be, you and I will be doing a news conference in about an hour from now where we will get into more of the details of this agreement that we have signed together and this $593 million in operating and capital funding over the next 10 years uh, invested in the City of Ottawa. But thank you again, Premier, for not just that, but for our continued working relationship and for your commitment to the residents of Ottawa. Well, thank, thank you, Mayor, and I want to thank you for your relationship, our friendship, but I want to thank each and every one of you. I'll tell you, you have an opportunity, a lot of you travel around the world. We are blessed to live in the greatest jurisdiction anywhere, bar none, in the world right here in Ontario. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Premier Doug Ford. Premier, we'll just hold you on stage here for a second. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Kern from the Ottawa Business Journal. Wow, what, uh, what a great presentation. Uh, thank you, Premier Ford, uh, for being here to talk to local uh, business leaders and community leaders. The next time you're coming to town, uh, give us a heads up. We'll phone Cyril Leader. We'll book the Canadian Tire Center. We'll sell it out. How's that, Premier? Uh, okay. Well, they got 18,000 plus seats, so uh, this room, uh, we sold out, as you might know, uh, Premier, we sold 300 tickets in 30 minutes and had to stop selling tickets to reconsider uh, the venue, so that's, uh, that's your popularity with this crowd. Uh, to demonstrate our appreciation, uh, Premier, I'm going to ask Stephen Herzog from Eamon Harden to come forward and uh, present you a little gift. It's like it's your birthday today. You come to Ottawa, we'll treat you well. Thank you uh, once again, Premier. Thank you, Stephen. We'll take a quick photo. Thank you once again. Oh, we're opening all the gifts here, too. It's like Christmas morning. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, made, made in Ottawa, Premier. And before you walk off stage, we're going to get Minister Bethlen Falvey up here and take one last photo. photo. Minister, uh, thank you uh, so much for the hard work you've done on that budget. We're all watching with, uh, with bated breath uh, to hear about the broad strokes. But Minister, to hear about this new deal for Ottawa, that's super exciting. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Minister, the Finance Minister, Bethlen Falvey. It's the council, oh sorry, it's the council and our whole team uh, that really made this happen. Do you mind the councillors and our You're MPPs the to come up? <laughs> because Get up here. It's all, it's all one team. Thank you. Here they come. And I'll make room. We hope we got the right specs on that load-bearing stage. <laughs> Was this anticipated? <laughs> I 
Esses 